limited top six. We've only got four in them to uh, to try, uh, top three, top six three. to move into three. Sorry, it's got a bit confusing with the four, six, and the three there in my little brain because maths wasn't my strong point. Me neither. neither was English. Neither was oh, or history. Engli English was okay. I was okay cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Reuben Hoxima and Jake Wood. Reuben Hoxima last time out just overthought everything and made a terrible, terrible. Uh, well, he made a bit of a mistake really. I was just trying to find the right and correct words to use, but I couldn't uh, find the words that I needed to use due to the family-friendly atmosphere here at the Jet Sprints. But uh, he made a right mess of it last time, but so far, so good in this lap. Can he nail this hairpin? Yes, he does. Oh, so, just, uh, yeah, just. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, it is good to see that Reuben Hoxheimer and Jake Woody just needs to keep the anger a little bit calm, but the split isn't bad at a 37, a 6, 8, 4. Just got to keep it all together here, young Reuben. So will Jake, and you can see uh, Jake just sitting back there very comfortably in the seat, obviously talking through the headphones. Reuben Hoxheimer, that's his best time of a 52.245. Oh, mate, he has just got better and better and better throughout the course of the day. Well, except for the second last one where he just made a right mess of yeah. it. But I'll tell you what, he learnt from that, and he learnt from that in a very rapid sense too. Yep. So really good to see that that is uh, what is going on. So we now will have, uh, interesting to see who will be coming out next. I dare say it should be Scott Donald, according to our timesheet up here. So, yes, indeed, Scott Donald and Nicole Reesby. They'll come out, mate. They'll have a point to prove. They won't want uh, Ruben to get up any higher than third. So, I think they'll come out and say, little fella, you're getting better, but you're not quite there yet. Well, that's right. You know, Scotty Donald, just as we keep saying, just his ability over the last four or five, you know, three or four race meetings, uh, let's just hope that that, uh, that winning feeling and that podium position becomes a little bit regular for the man out of Featherston. Nicole Reef be doing the navigational duties and... Uh, Wow, have a look at the way Scotty Donald is just approaching this course here at Wanganui. One of the uh, most iconic courses in the world for jet sprinting. There is no doubt about that. It's been operating for uh, since 2004, as we spoke to Daryl Hutton earlier. And Scotty Donald is absolutely all over this one. Now coming down the PSP chute into that all-important hairpin. Just went around that uh, corner like the boat was on rails. Didn't look like putting a single foot wrong. 34.790 is the split. Oh, these guys are for lying here, KV. They want, they have got a point to prove. They've been fantastic all day as they come around the sweeper for the last time in this lap. What a time, folks. 48.161. What a run from these guys. Put your hands together for them, please. What a great drive from Scotty Donald. And, uh, oh, man, go back and celebrate, boy. You are sitting pretty at the moment, but... Well, interestingly, we I'm looking down on to the, uh, onto the launch ramp and I cannot see the championship leader in Glen Head down there. Oh, he's coming through now uh, from the back of the paddock, but it is going to be Rob Coley. Uh, we have been corrected. It is a 600 cubic inch engine, not the 632. Thank you, Baden Gray from Prosper Mortgages and Insurance. The, uh, as he said, the know-it-all spectator, but he does know it, so he sent through the uh, correct information. So if you're looking for a good mortgage opportunity, ring up Prosper Mortgages and Insurance. But Rob and Ange Coley, the 600... 600 cubic inch machine out there, mouth fresh, the best tasting toothpaste in the world. And Rob and Ange Coley put so much into this sport. They've got uh, four super boats, and unfortunately, uh, this one is the one that he's having a cracker day today. And he will rue that uh, taking the, uh, the twin turbo out first thing this morning because the way the rules operate is you are not allowed to B drive a boat. Oh, so there's the cough that's cost him. <laughs> Earlier in the day, it's passed through. Can it get through this one as it comes around the sweeper through the split? Oh, 9 at the split. Oh, my so goodness. So, Rob Coley driving the 600 cubes beautifully at the moment. The boat is a poison ivy. And have a look at Anne. She's just holding on for dear life. She's 47 like, oh. 47.109. 47.109. Rob Coley, cracker. 
did you notice that? Ange just sitting there holding on. No navigating at all. She's just going, honey, just put the foot down. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. <laughs> just have some she, fun. Uh, Edge Coley's just as mad as Rob. They like to win it or weld it, and they don't care if they have to weld it on the way to winning it at yep. some point. She did tell me I caught up with her in the in the queue for a coffee this morning, and I said, how are you going? She said, Slim, we're either going to win it or bin it. And unfortunately, they binned it, but they've won it. And the oh, It's been a confusing to, day, it hasn't it? It has been it? a confusing <laughs> day, mate. It sure has. It sure so, uh, has. Glenn Head and Hayley Todd down there in the old Therm Window Systems machine. The uh, odds on favourite to take this meeting here for round two of the PSP Building Brands uh, second round well, Jet Sprint season. Well, he's got to get off the trailer first. Well, yeah, but they've got an interesting system with this, uh, this engine. The starter motor is like a Formula One starter engine. They push the starter motor into place. They start the boat and then remove the entire starter motor and put it in the back of the ute to uh, save about three kilos. Well, there's nothing much to Glenn and Haley, so, you know, they've saved probably oh, 10, 15 kilos there in the, uh, in the passengers, so... And when, and when you compare the uh, combined weight of Glenn and Haley to, say, for example, uh, Kyle Patrick and Darren Todd, you know, you've got about 240 kilos combined versus about 160 kilos combined. Yep. And when you're pulling six Gs, all of that accumulation of the weight as the G-forces take effect make a big, massive lot of weight that the boat has to be able to push and pull and do all sorts of weird things. But uh, Glenn Head, uh, just going through the routine at the moment, we've got uh, Lou down there on the ramp just saying, yep, no worries, you guys are right to go. So I dare say that we will see Glenn Head off the trailer in just a second or two. So Glenn Head at the moment with the fastest time of the day in the 46.4 from memory. He came into, the, uh, into this top six with a 50, but uh, certainly can go a lot quicker. There is no doubt about that. Now, he's getting to the business end of the day. What is he, is he going to push it here or will he wait to the no, final? I think he'll wait to the top three. Oh, I've been wrong before, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have a look at this. This... Uh, this hull, the engine that Glen Head builds himself, the uh, it is just a splendiferous boat, no doubt about that. The HRE race engines, Eltham and a Lucas Oil sponsored machine. Oh, it's just pretty to watch, I tell you. I watch these guys all day as they come through. Look oh, at have that. a look. No, there's a problem in the jet unit. The bucket is about to break away. Have a look at the back of the boat. That'll be causing all sorts of problems there. The uh, split is a 32.725. Glenn will be feeling that vibration through the back of the boat. He'll be looking at the dash to make sure there's no problem. And the boat not handling well, but Glenn Head still posts a 45.791 <laughs> with, uh, with that reverse bucket flapping in the breeze. They are going to have to get that sorted out. Still posting the best time of the day, 45.791. Wow. That is unreal. I tell you, that is harder than towing a skier or a wakeboarder doing that. You could see Glenn, had, particularly down the bottom part of the track, really wrestling that boat. He now realises he's got no reverse as he just knows that it into the spin-out wall. So uh, the rescue crew will have to come to rescue that. He, he just kept pushing that. He knew the dials, the gauges were giving him the right information that it wasn't an engine issue. So uh, certainly the experience of a reigning New Zealand champion and a former world champion in this category really shining through. But will they have a spare reverse bucket? You must have an operational reverse bucket to go out onto the track. Well, just a bit of masking tape, a bit of uh, duct tape usually fixes most things, Cavy. Well, as, as we know, WD-40, if it doesn't move and it should, WD-40, if it does move and it shouldn't, duct tape. Yeah, definitely. Black duct tape always works. So, so uh, Glenn Head and Hayley Todd just uh, being pulled back up onto the trailer and now, because we're into the top three, they have very, very limited time to get that reverse bucket sorted out. But we are now into our finals, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to go into our Group B top three. It will be Hayden Wilson in the white noise machine, Carl Beaver in the Beaver Oliver and Chris Rasmussen in the Venom machine, shooting it out.
against one another to determine who is going to stand on top of the podium in about five minutes' time. I tell you what, Cave, you wouldn't see that very often, that Glenn and Haley get uh, pulled in by the rescue crew, mate. That just doesn't happen unless something terrible goes wrong. But, yeah, if you can have a look... Uh, Oh, that's uh, devastating. They'll want the other uh, crew to be working pretty fast on that to get that cover back on the boat. So they've got most things in that big truck of theirs. I'm sure they've got a reverse cover. If they haven't, well, they're going to learn from this and hurry, aren't they? Well, it is very interesting. We have seen reverse actuators actually cause problems with uh, multiple world champion Peter Coey years ago. These little bits and pieces, um, as they say in racing, you can have a million dollar machine, but it's a 10 cent part that causes the failure. So, uh, well, time will tell, but now.